Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Manage the Wild. I'm your host, Nick Madsen. Today, we're going to talk about BAM, which is a drug that we use when we are chemically immobilizing animals. The other day, we had a situation where we had to go in and chemically immobilize moose. We had multiple moose in a facility uh, that they couldn't get out, and we needed them to get out. And they can't just open the gates because it would release all the other animals. So we move into this area to chemically immobilize this moose. What our hope, what our goal was, was to immobilize the moose, throw it on a sled, drag it out one of the gates, or attach it to a snowmobile, pull it out, and then release it, uh, reverse the drugs, and then have it go on its way. Things went pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of snow. We're dealing with the situation, and for us to get out the gate we had to dig uh, about a normal bedroom sized area so i don't know what a, what is a normal bedroom a 10 10 feet by 10 feet area we had to dig down about six feet so we could open up the gate and the moose would walk right out if it didn't walk out we were going to dart it and so we dug down uh, it was a lot of work um with small shovels and whatnot, uh, it was a lot of work to be able to dig down that deep with everything crusted over. We got the gate open, and we started to drive. We had people walk and drive in the moose. I was up higher, and when it got to the gate and it passed the gate, then I would walk down uh, slowly, and it would walk back uh, to where the fence is, drop down, and go through the gate. That was the idea, but it did not. Uh, it started to come up at me. And so I got real big and real loud, and uh, it laid its ears down, started walking towards me a little aggressive, like it wasn't going to be pushed away. So I took my shovel and I started whacking trees, turned it around, it went right to the gate where it was supposed to go through. Problem is, we didn't dig down deep enough that it could just walk down. It didn't want to jump down off the ledge. And so uh, it turned away from the gate, took off running. The biologist made a dang good shot, hit it in the rump as it was running away. Boom. Uh, one o'clock, injection time. And you start watching your watch and counting down because you know it's going to take about five minutes. Uh, if the moose was a little amped up, maybe a little bit more. But we had the perfect amount of drug for what it was. We knew roughly how big they were. So I'm watching this moose go up the hillside. And watching the clock, and we get to five minutes, and it kind of stumbles under a tree. And I think, oh, this is it. Uh, we're going to have a heck of a, a time getting it down through all the brush, but this will be perfect. And then it stood up, and then it started going up higher, and then it got about 500 yards away. And I look, and it had been 15 minutes, and we realized that this moose isn't going down. This is some of the challenges that you face when you are working with wildlife. You come in to a situation where you you have a pretty good understanding. The challenges that we faced that day, there's a lot of humidity uh, in the air. It was really cold. It was uh, snowing in the lower valleys. It was raining pretty good, but the upper valley where we were at, it was snowing really hard. Temperatures were below 30. I think when we got there, it was 21, 22 degrees. And so that's the issue. We're talking about BAM. BAM is what they call, let's see, butyrol phenol asperone metatomidine. And that is used for immobilization of animals. They use it on white-tailed deer, mule deer, moose, elk, elephants in certain cases. Yeah, it's been used on a lot of things. Uh, and you kind of mess with the mixture of the drugs. And we leave that up to the veterinarians. Uh, our state has a veterinarian, and they kind of play with uh, the different mixtures and how well they like the drug. We have used that uh, since I've years they've gone up to do. We've never had a whole lot of issues with it. Um, usually it, it's not fast acting. One of uh, the issues I would say is if there is an animal, and this is probably with all drugs, but if there is an animal that's really hyped up, then you don't, uh, you may want to add a little bit more or take another shot on it. But usually in reversal, 
Uh, when you go to reverse the drugs, everything usually works out pretty good. There is that. So what uh, possibly could have happened? Uh, talking with everybody, there's a whole lot of things going on. The moose could have been amped up more. We may have not given it enough drugs. Or the other uh possibility is we saw the moose coming in and he had the uh drug in his pocket and when he saw the moose coming he pulled the dart out put it in the gun and at 20 degree weather with all the moisture coming down it was really cold uh it, there's a possibility that it the mixture got really thick with inside the dart and it didn't, uh, when it hit the moose, it didn't inject. So we spent uh, another oh, five, six hours chasing uh, this moose. Obviously, we're not running because it's steep hills, but we're looking in all the different pockets and all the different drainages of this facility, trying to locate it. And uh, ultimately, the weather got worse, and then it got dark. And um, after it gets dark like that, you're you're not going to, uh, be able to dart them. And so we ended up having to go uh, leave that area. Uh, we're going back next week. Hopefully, it, if looking at the temperatures, uh, we're going to be in the upper 30s to even the 40s. So temperatures are going to be a lot better. Also, um, we do have a little bit of rain slash snow coming in Tuesday and Wednesday, but Thursday, things should be looking better. So but butyrol, phenol, asperone, and metatomidine uh, banned. Used it multiple times on multiple animals. So, uh, you know, actually, some of the challenge that we do have is getting the right air pressure. Air pressure, you use a little CO2 uh, canister like you would on a BB gun, and you set your pressure, and depending on the amount of pressure you're using, it's how far it'll throw the dart. But if you're off a yard or two, you could be four to ten inches off, high or low. What I generally do is uh, if the moose, if we range find it, uh, the moose, the deer, the elk, whatever it is, I'll put it for about 22. And if that moose takes a couple of steps further before I can get a good shot on it, then you're okay. If it goes further, then you're going to have to keep range finding it. So oftentimes we'll have two people. The first guy, he's obviously the shooter. The second guy is walking right next to him with his range finder, constantly range finding, making sure that we've got the right air pressure. Uh, this gets a little nerve wracking, um, especially if you're uncomfortable doing this, because what you can do is as you're walking, he's telling you the pressure and the yardage, and so you're cranking up, cranking up, cranking up, and then all of a sudden the moose starts walking back at you. Then you start decreasing, and you're letting out the air pressure. I've watched a person crank it up as the moose walked away, and then as the moose came back, they decreased, and then the moose turned around and walked away, and they could never get a shot fired, and then they ran out of air. Then you have to swap out the air canister and start that whole process again, so it gets a little bit complicated. And so you kind of have to go in there, go quick, but also make sure you're going to have a good shot. We never dart at night because uh, all those drugs in a dart, you don't know where the dart's going to go. Um, and so you want to be careful when you're dealing with something like that. So that is one of the challenges that we have recently faced. You guys have a great day. Stay wild.